many of you guys are having a problem and you feel like you want to increase your game when it comes to converting listings? I thought about how I could help you guys convert more listings and one thing I realized immediately was that I was going to have to challenge your beliefs. You need to be stretched outside your comfort zone. We got to learn new things, to do new things, to have new things. Right? You gotta become the person, the next best version of yourself that will actually do it. What most people do, I'm guilty, you're guilty. We do the whole process over again. Appreciate where I am, where's the 20%, go all in, make up my 80. See, what takes so long is you contemplating if you're gonna change or not. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Carew! Ricky Carew. From Gulf Shores, Alabama, I introduce you, he's number one, not top four, he's the man of the real estate industry, and he will get you leads, a lot more than you can fathom, reach out to property owners and knock doors, get right. the Right, one more speaker, how we doing, are you guys excited? All right, so I have the pleasure of introducing somebody I think you all know by now, I'm not sure. But please, let's welcome to the stage Ricky Caruth. You don't know to get a lot of deals in hours. Matt, you need a lot of Matt. Get it. Tell him all about it. Give it to mom. Okay, quit. For give it up for Whitley. <laughs> And my beautiful wife, Carlin. Get real loud for a second. I want to hear how loud you can really get. How many, how many of you guys already follow me somewhere? Oh. I was actually going to do this at the end, but I was going to make some content with you guys. Y'all want to go ahead and do that now? Okay, okay. When I say psych, when I say psych, that's gonna mean get loud as you can. So we're gonna get up here and make cold calls. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Guys, you're not even gonna believe this. I came down to Miami today to speak at the Lux Summit and because the market's so bad, nobody showed up. And yeah, psych. <laughs> All right, let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. How's the market in Miami? <laughs> Ain't no more in your in Miami. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, there it is. You heard it from the horse's mouth. But let me get back to my speech. <laughs> That's how you make a video. That's how you make a video. All right, that was too good. Let me make sure we're going to save this. I don't want to let this one go. How you guys doing? Okay. That's good, that's there, we're in the game. We're in the game, and you guys are in the game. You guys look amazing. I, I, love, I love Miami, I love Miami. I, I, one more time, I travel, I go everywhere with my wife and daughter. My daughter comes up here and waves everybody every time I go on the stage. Give it up for one more time, my, my daughter Willie and my wife Carly. We, we, uh, we've been here for a couple days, we stayed here at the Biltmore. When we pulled up, I was like, is it, are, are, are we at the, where, where are we? How oh, funny the Taj Mahal, we're at the Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> now, this is amazing. You guys look incredible. I'm ready to do this. Today, I want to talk about listing conversion. Listing conversion. So if you learn how to convert more listings, let me hear you. Okay. <laughs> I thought about how I could help you guys convert more listings, and one thing I realized immediately was that in order for me to help you convert more listings, I was gonna have to challenge your beliefs. The things that you think right now. I'm gonna have to challenge that. Are you, are you okay with that? Okay, because a great coach, they're gonna say things that make zero sense. Okay? If the things that you needed to do to get where you wanted to be made sense, you would already be doing them, right? If a coach tells you a lot of stuff and you're like really getting it and it's all crystal clear, makes crystal clear sense, what do you need to do? Fire them. Because all they're doing is reconfirming your bad habits. You need to be stretched outside your comfort zone. 
right? You need to be stretched far beyond what you think right now because what you think now only got you where you are. So this is the first, this is the first step to listing conversion is realizing that the way that we're converting listings right now only got us to this, this level. And if we keep trying to convert listings the same exact way, then we're going to continue to com have the same conversion rate. We got to learn new things, to do new things, to have new things. Okay. So when I think about challenging you, taking you out of your comfort zone, okay, I start to think about a lot of different things. Okay. Like, for example, most agents that think, I have a lead conversion problem. I'm having a problem converting listings, okay? How many of you, how many of you guys have a problem converting listings? Are you looking to set and close more listing appointments? That's exactly why I created the Set More Listing Appointments Challenge. It's a four day challenge and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about setting more listing appointments and closing more listing appointments. If you wanna become a listing machine, then you need to take the next challenge. You can go to setmorelistingappointments.com or just click the link in the description. I'll see you on the next challenge. Are we being honest today? How many of you guys are having a problem and you feel like you want to increase your game when it comes to converting listings? Okay. So when I think about you, it, obviously you guys don't think you have a problem with this. We can talk about something else. Okay. But if you, if you feel like you have a problem converting leads, okay, we can address that. That's, that's an easy fix. I can figure out where you're going wrong and we can fix that issue, okay? But I submit that that most likely is not your real problem, the root of the issue. So if I don't attack the root of the issue and I teach you how to become, a, become better at converting, all I'm doing is putting a Band-Aid on the problem and I haven't fixed anything and now your real problem still exists and now your business is still average. Even though you're converting better, you're converting, your conversion went from 2% to 10% to 20% to 30%, but you're still average. Why? Because I haven't fixed the true problem in your business that you don't even realize is the problem. I'll give you an example. I did a workshop about a month ago in Gulf Shores. The agents kind of came in and I do my normal thing. I'm breaking down their business and I'm figuring out where they're getting stuck. Because everybody's stuck somewhere in the business. Now, while, while we're being honest, are, are we stuck in our business somewhere? We want to get to the next level? Okay. We're all stuck somewhere. So as I'm evaluating their business, I'm going through the four key pillars. Lead generation, conversion, retention, and ascension. And I'm breaking down everything they're doing. I'm identifying exactly where they're going wrong in their business. And we're going around the table and, and the agent says, I'm having a problem with lead conversion. Converting listings. You got all these sellers, they don't want, they're not doing anything. They're not doing it. They're not listing, they're not moving forward, whatever. I said, okay, I'll address that, okay? But I don't know that that's your issue. Let's dig a little deeper. We continue the conversation and I said, look, I can help you increase your lead conversion, okay? But if we ain't having enough conversations with people, it don't matter. If you're gonna get great at converting the five, lit, the five people that you're working with, and you increase it from one to two people out of five, your business is still average. You could take somebody with a horrible conversion rate, and if they're doing the lead gen right, talking to enough people, they crush. I know people that are horrible at converting deals, but yeah, they're some of the top agents out there. Why? Because they, they, they don't have a lead gen problem. Most people that have a lead conversion problem, that think they have a lead conversion problem, they don't have a lead conversion problem. They're actually pretty good at lead conversion. They have a lead gen problem. They're not talking to enough people. So with that being said, okay, lead gen is probably most everybody's problems. Then the first step towards actually having the transformation in your business. But for the sake of what we're doing today, we're gonna talk about lead conversion. All right, y'all good with that? Yeah. Give it up, mom. Give it up for a mom in the back. We in Miami. 
When you think about where you're stuck in your business, where you think you're stuck, and you think lead gen, lead conversion, lead retention, lead ascension, right? And you start really breaking your business down. Do you think, Ricky, just tell me what I need to do. Just tell me the tactics, the day-to-day -day of what I need to do. What I need to do, one, two, three, four, here's what I need to do at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, just tell me the actions I need to take to get unstuck, right? Is that what most of you want? No? Yes? Who does it? Anybody? Okay, then what do you want? Teach you to fish for yourself. That ain't got nothing to do with just telling you what to do. No, 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 you ain't dependent on me. I'll tell you what to do, you go do it. That's cool, right? I submit to you guys that knowing what to do is not what you need. Everyone thinks that's what they need. Does anybody in here not know how to get a listing? Be honest, does it? Okay, one, two, okay, three, four, five. There's this really cool site, okay? G-O-O-G-L-E dot com and you go how do I get a listing and a million things pops up now out of a room of 400 plus we got like four people let's just say one percent raise their hand and in actuality they know how to get listings they just don't know that they know because they think it's more complicated than it actually is it's incredibly simple you, you communicate with property owners you create relationships and you list properties that's a very simplified version of it. But everybody here, 99% of you said, you already know how to get listings. So what do you need me to tell you what to do to get to the next level? You already know. Knowing's not the problem. What's the problem? <laughs> Doing. <laughs> Just doing it. You're not doing it. You know what to do, but you're not doing it. Why? Okay? And this comes to why you're actually, what you're actually looking for. You're not looking for the how-tos. The how-tos are out there. They're everywhere. It's everywhere. The how-tos, you guys know the how-tos. How-tos are easy. It's everywhere. You got it. You're not doing it. Okay? So how do we go from someone who knows to someone who does? Ah, see, this is what we need to be talking about. How do we take action on the things that we already know we need to be doing? And what does that involve? It's one word. Good transformation. So what you guys really want, and what I really need to help you do, is have a transformation in order to convert more listings. It's not a matter of conversion. It's a matter of talking to more property owners. Ah. No! Don't tell me that. It can't be that simple. Yeah, it is. Call, text, email, social media, direct mail, smoke signals. Stand on the corner with a sign, wave everybody going by. Whatever it is. You communicate with property owners. You know what you need to do? You're just not doing it. You need transformation. Right? You gotta become the person, the next best version of yourself that will actually do it. See, the version of you now will not do it, but the next best version will. I can, I can give you guys a two step process to having transformation after transformation after transformation after transformation. If you want it, I'll tell you right now. But if you don't like it, move on to the next thing. Y'all, y'all, okay, I'll tell her. Step one to finding your transformation, to having a transformation. Step one, appreciate where you are right now and how far you've come. Oh, that's some cliche. That is the most general thing you've ever said, okay? Let me dig deeper. It's a two-step process, and I'm going to tell you the secret to this. What most people do, I'm guilty, you're guilty. 
They look at where their current situation and level of success is right now. And they compare it to where they think they should be. And, and you compare where you are to where you feel like you should be. And you start to become frustrated with where you are, which devalues where you are and how far you've come. It devalues where you are and how far you've come. And until you can appreciate where you are, you're not going to go to the next level because you're going to stay in a frustrated state thinking you just need to do more of the same stuff, which isn't going to get you any further. I don't mean to yell and scream, but it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> They pay me way too much money to come up here and lie to y'all. <laughs> Step one is appreciating where you are, taking a second, looking at everything you've done up to this point, and appreciating it, even if you're struggling. The fact that you have a real estate license, wow. What's that? Like 0.0001% of the world has a real estate license in America? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for giving me a license in America and allowing me the opportunity to crush something that is unlimited forever, that there's zero competition, and that closings will happen every single day for the rest of my life. Thank you, God. No, no, we want to compare ourselves to where we think we should be. We're not making a million dollars yet. So and so is making a million dollars, and I'm not. Maybe you should take up darts. Appreciate where you are, ladies and gentlemen, and how far you've come. Golf clout, whoever did that, I like to do I'll give you an example of, 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 an, of this in my, in my journey. In 2014, uh, I made 600K um, monumental. Wow. December 2014, I put together this grand plan to make a million dollars in 2015. I'm going to make this many calls. I'm going to go on this many appointments. I'm going to give me this many listings. I'm going to do this many deals. I'm going to make a million dollars. January hits, I start executing. February, March, April, I start to realize I'm only going to hit 600 again, only. I'm only going to hit 600 again. And guess what I did? I started to become deeply frustrated. Am I good enough? Why can't I do it? What's wrong with me? I'm making 600,000. Did you hear me? $600,000 in, in Alabama. <laughs> oh, man. I grew up roofing houses, okay? I'm making 600K. I dropped out of college. I'm making 600K. 600K. I shouldn't have been trying to figure out how to make a million dollars. I should have been coming down to Miami. <laughs> Go to the club. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, y'all wouldn't wanted to see me at the club in Miami back in the day. It would have been trouble. <laughs> you know what I did that year? Right then when I got frustrated, what I do? I hired a coach. And through that process, I realized I'm doing quite well. I need to appreciate where I am and continue moving forward. Look at how far I've come. Look at how much potential I got. Look at what I got. We don't appreciate what we got. First step is transformation, okay? And step two is recognizing, and this is the biggest one, and this is the hardest one. And this is where everybody, anybody can appreciate where they are, right? That's easy. The hardest part is step two, and this is gonna be the make or break. 
And this is why everybody struggles and everybody plateaus and everybody is frustrated and, and hardly anybody makes it to the next level, next level, next level. You have to realize that 20% of your actions produce 80% of your results. Okay, did I say it too fast? 20% of your actions produce 80% of your results. When you plateau, when you're frustrated, okay, this is what you do. You, you sit down, you appreciate where you are. Don't, frustration, get on out of here. Let me appreciate where I am and let me identify where that 20% is that's producing 80% of my results. And now what we do? We go all in on the 20% and make it our AD. And now we've leveled up. We do that until that 80 is now producing 20% of our results. We do the whole process over again. Appreciate where I am, where's the 20%, go all in, make it my 80. Do that till I plateau, appreciate where I am, where's the 20%, make it my 80. Plateau, 20, 80, over and over. You keep leveling up, leveling up, leveling up, leveling up. I just gave you guys the secret to life. That's a sharp picture. But nobody's gonna do it. Nobody's gonna do what I said, why? Because here's why, and this is the part I really want you to, tonight, and you're laying down, oh, goodness. Nobody wants to let go of the 80%. Because the 80% that's producing 20% of your results, that's what got you there, and you're too scared. You're too attached. You can't let that go. Can't let it go. It's my little snuggie bear. Can't let it go. It got you where you are, and you're like, oh, I can't let this go. It got me where I am. It's got to be able to get me further. And so you keep on banging your head against the wall doing the same stuff that's not going to get you any further. It, is, it will get you to here. Okay, but then this little bit over here that's producing, now it's got to be the thing that gets you to here. And this little thing got to be, understand? I want you to think about this in your businesses. I want to tell you guys, if it's okay, my one of, probably the, the biggest transformational story in, in my life for me. Can I tell you? Okay, let me take a deep breath. I got in real estate in 2002. We were, there wasn't no, there were, was there a cell phone? There was no cell phones. There was flip phones. Boy, I remember them flip phones. I thought I was something. Somebody would call and I would. It was, that was you do that. Deep breath. Fax. Anybody ever fax something? Okay, when you negotiate a contract for you millennials, Gen Zers, when you, I'm, a, I'm the oldest millennial in the, on the world in, in the face of the planet. When you fax, when you negotiate a deal through fax, and you go back and forth so many times that it ends up being, literally the contract on, on the piece of paper is this big. You don't, you can't even tell if the initials are there or what, it's just a blob. Anyway, um, so I've seen a lot of stuff. I get in in 2002. I'm going to make a long story short because I want to get to the transformation, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard my, my core story. I make a mill before I'm 23. I'm 20 in 2002. I make a mill before I'm 23. I lose it all in the crash. Okay? I went back to roofing houses. I got a job on an oil rig. I'm working on an oil rig in Mississippi, driving there every other week. I'm like, oh, this is my chance back in the real estate game. You know, every other week, no, it takes you a week to recover from the oil rig and then you gotta go back. So I did that for a year, I have no idea why. To this day, I don't, I don't understand why I did that. I didn't need the money. I saw people get hurt really, I don't know why I did that, but I did. And when I come back, I got laid off from the oil rig in 2008, January. Yeah, it was like April. And I'd already been dabbling back into real estate, okay? So I get back in real estate in 2008. The easiest time in the world. It, 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 it was the, the best time ever to be a real estate agent. There were so much, so many homes for sale for half price and there was no agents. I was killing it. I was like, take your pick. Like me and the buyer are laughing. It's like, dude, <laughs> half price, anything you want. It was amazing. And so I got, that's how I got back in the business. 
A second time around, I realized, like, you got to value people. I'm going to get into that when I get into the conversion side a little deeper. I also realized closings will happen every day for the rest of your life, regardless of anything that happens in the market. We're, we're, we, could it get worse than it is now? Sure, maybe. What's the chances? Probably zilch. This is it. We're still here. We're still surviving. Like, we're still crushing it. There's plenty. There's more than enough for everyone to have more than enough and still be more than enough left over. Left over? What's the leftovers? What, what's, the, what's the leftovers? What you call it? What's the leftovers of the market? Huh? For sale by owners? Yeah. Yeah. For sale by owners. Leftovers. So I get back in, right? I start to build my business on people. I don't care about doing deals. When I talk to a prospect, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to sell their property or get them to buy something. I'm using the property as an excuse to try to connect and see what they want to do so I can help them do it, right? That's why a lot of you can't convert because you're trying to get them to do what you want them to do versus just help them do what they want to do. There, I said it. I built my business, and in 2010, we had the BP oil spill. Did you guys feel the effects of that at all? Y'all are on this side. Y'all probably didn't feel the effects of that. We did, right? I'm right on the beach in Alabama. Do y'all know Alabama has beaches? Yeah? No? They got some of the most beautiful. The, the, the Florida Panhandle runs in Alabama 30, 40 miles. Beautiful, white, sandy beaches, palm trees. Like, it's, it's sugar sand. Like, y'all don't, yeah, don't know nothing about that down here. It's sugar powdery sand. Palm trees, million dollar condos, beautiful. So that happens in 2010, and I crushed it that year. It was a mini recession. I made much more money than I made the year before, and I was like, I got this real estate thing down, right? The market can't take me out. I, I crushed it in a mini recession, and now I'm gonna go to the moon. Now, what's my first step to go to the moon? I wanna get around the top producing agents. I want them to get around the number one agents in my market so I can work right there, watch them, and crush them. So, I went to a company. I don't I'm not going to mention what company it was. They were the number one company. I went there, and the very first day, I walked there. Is my wife still here? Okay. She left. The very first day I walk in, and I look down the hall, and I see her for the first time. And I'm like, ooh. Like, that's where I got the whole ooh thing on the, for the reels. I said, I wonder how long she's been working here. Right? But I didn't say anything to her. Yeah, I go about my thing. I'm crushing. I'm working. I'm doing my stuff. Well, did I know? She down there on the other side of the hallway, looking out the side of her eye, talking about, ooh. I wonder how long he been working here. <laughs> and so after a couple months, we finally, you know, talk, like run in to see each other in the hallway or something. Forget what happened. We started talking. We realized we started on the same, basically the same day. She was new. I was new. Right? That was pretty funny. Come to find out, we went to high school together. She was a sophomore. I was a senior. Right? So, so she was the broker's assistant, right? The owner of the company, broker's assistant. So, yeah, we, you can't, we can't date people like that. You can't date people like that. So, we had to, we, we, so, so at first, we were never going to date. We're just friends, like for real. I know y'all don't believe me, but we're just friends. And we, 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 you know, we'd meet up, we'd talk, you know, we were friends. Like, I'd tell her stuff I would never tell. Like, she tell, like, she was one of the guys, I was one of the girls. Like, we were friends for a while. And then that, that started to change, which is really cool because we were friends for so long. Then we dated for a while. Then, you know, like, that, 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 that was really incredible. How the whole, because most people, they, they don't have, they're just like, they date. But we started to date, and it was still kind of a secret. And we were going out every night, drinking, having the time of our lives, just dancing and laughing and doing all the stuff that y'all do down here, Miami, right? <laughs> <laughs> but 
just having the time of our life for a couple of years, right? But then the tide started to turn where we were going out, we were drinking, but it started to become an argument every night, right? Because we're drunk. And who knows what it was about? We don't know. Yeah, who, who does ever know? <laughs> so we started having these arguments and they got worse and worse and worse and worse. And it got so bad that we broke up. And so I, as heartbroken as I was, I was like, but I'm single now. I'm gonna hit the club. I'm gonna go crazy. And I did that for about a week. About a week. And I'm going out without her and I, I do go nuts. Crazy. And I, I had a drug problem. And alcohol wasn't really a problem at all, but I did it all every day, right? But it was a drug and alcohol problem, something I tried to quit forever, for years and years and years. I'd quit, and an hour later, I was smoking again. I quit for an hour. Couldn't, couldn't quit. So here I am, that last week, and I remember it was a week because it was Saturday we broke up and it was Saturday when this happened. I go out one night and I go really crazy and I'm laying in my condo by myself in my bed and I'm literally dying. I'm ODing. My, my heart is beating out of my chest, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm seeing stuff. I'm literally dying. And I'm looking up at the ceiling and this ceiling is amazing, by the way. Jesus. <laughs> I'm looking up, and I literally see Jesus. And I'm like, okay. I said, well, I, 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 I'll tell you this then. Lord, if I ever wake up in the morning, if I wake up, all right, I will never touch another sip Smoke, nothing, nothing, not a drop of nothing, right? If I wake up. So the next morning, I woke up. I woke up and there was all kinds of stuff on my dresser, boop, threw it in the toilet, flushed it. I called Carlin and I said, hey, I almost died last night. I said, you know, I know it's only been like six hours, but I quit everything. I don't know if you believe me, it's been like three hours. But I like to get back together if you want to meet and talk. If not, I understand. So she agreed to it. We met, we talked, and we got back together. And since that night, since that night, I haven't touched a single drop a single smoke, a single anything. Now that night was March 30th, 2014. Okay, so add that up. It's been ten, a little over 10 years. And that year, that year was the year I just talked about a while ago where I made 600K. Right? That was the first year that I sold 100 properties. And I sold 100 properties every year after that for eight years in a row. Right? Maybe that's a coincidence. Maybe it's not. My point of this is that the transformational moment that I had, it was instant. It happened instantaneously. And then every, people, think, people think transformation is this long journey of transformation. How it's not. Transformation is just the moment that you decide you're going to change. And, 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 and actually have the transformation. See, what takes so long is you contemplating if you're going to change or not. Oh, I know I need to do that, but I just ain't doing it. Okay. You're just gonna stay where you are until you make the decision. See, what takes so long with the transformation is getting ready to make the decision, 
But the transformation itself is instantaneous. Everybody in this room knows what you need to be doing. Okay, I've, I've broken down everything for you guys and we haven't even talked about conversion. Like literally, you could take what I just said and go double triple your business. Understanding this two-step process, appreciating where you are, turning your 20% into 80%, having that moment of transformation. People, people look at the before and afters of people with weight loss journeys, okay? They see, they see the, the, the heavier person, they see the skinnier person over here, you know, it's whatever. Let's just say a year in between. Well, the year wasn't the transformation. The transformation was a year ago, the moment they decided they were gonna live a different life. That was it. I walk around happy as can be because I know I'm going further places, but I've had so many moments in my life where I get so frustrated because I think I should be further along than I am financially. That's ridiculous. I, now I understand that and I appreciate where I am every single day. I don't compare myself to, to who I think I should be or other people. And I, I live in a place of just pure happiness. And that's the way you have to be. I call this the gray area. It's a place where you're satisfied and happy where you are, but yet still extremely ambitious to get to the next level. So you can live in, you can live in that gray area. You don't have to be happy, satisfied, and lazy, or super ambitious and unhappy because you keep moving your goal out further and further and further. Everybody in this room can have a transformation right now. I'm gonna be somebody different. I'm gonna go out here and do what I need to do to build my business. But here, here's, here's the last thing I'll say about it. The only moment you're gonna have a real transformation is the moment that you get tired of your current situation enough to say, I'm gonna do whatever I have to. See, I tried to quit for a while, but until I almost died, I said, well, but then it was like, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna live like this. I'm gonna change. So until you, until you look at your business and say, I'm tired of being average, you ain't gonna change. Until you say, I'm fed up with my business the way it is, then you'll make the sacrifices you need to and do the things that you already know that you need to do. Can you get an amen? All right. Church is in session. Let's praise the Lord. Let's talk about listing conversion. While we're at it, what do you guys say? Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all ready for this? The first thing you have to know through your journey of becoming a better converter of listings is just simply what a listing is. Hold What's a listing? What is a listing? Anyone? I want to hear, I want to hear some of these answers. Someone here, that, that would be a human being, ma'am. That's good, that's good. Can I give you the Ricky definition? A listing is a written agreement in which a property owner hires a real estate agent to solve a problem, not sell a property, to solve a problem by representing the said property owner on one or more of their properties for a specific price and agreed on commission. At which time the agent can take said agreement and use it as an asset to leverage into more, list, more listings, relationships, deals, as well as multiply their time to find the freedom that they've always desired. That's a listing. Now, my brain sweat for months coming up with that definition because I wanted to articulate to people what a listing actually is. It's a written agreement in which a property owner hires you to what? Solve a problem. If we can, if we can replace our methodology that they're hiring us to sell a property and replace it with solve their problem. Ooh, hoo -hoo. Lux properties will end up crushing it. How do we do that? We have to get into this mindset and start to understand how do we figure out what their problem is. 
I'll give an example. Well, first off, do you think anyone wakes up in the morning and says, I want to sell a property for no reason today? No siree. Their mother-in-law moved in. <laughs> right? Health isn't good. Mother-in-law moved in unexpectedly. House is too small. They love the house that they're in. They love it. They don't want to leave, but they got to. Why? Because they need a bigger, they need a bigger house. They need an extra bedroom. This is a problem that has nothing to do with the property. When you, when you look at every single reason why people buy and sell properties, it ain't got nothing to do with the house. Yeah, most of <laughs> It's something going on in their life. They got relocated. They got fired. They had a baby. Somebody died. They want, just want a better lifestyle. They ain't got nothing to do with the house. So if we can tap in to what their actual problem is, instead of just trying to close them, the reason we can't close is because we, we skip this part of the process. So there's a five-step process to listing properties. I call this the five C's. Caruth, 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 Caruth. Tick, tick. That reminds me, I don't know why I just thought of this out of nowhere. I haven't thought about this in years. My very first real estate ad was me. And I, I was like, literally like I was 12 in the brown suit. I don't, I don't know where this ad is. It was in a magazine. And it said, it said Caruth. And there was a dash in between car and Ruth. It said Caruth, Caruth, Caruth is on fire. I don't know why I just thought of that. Because if I would have thought of that and then thought maybe I should tell you, I would have decided, no, probably shouldn't tell y'all that. But I just did. The five C's. Number one, collect targeted seller data. Collect their data. Social media, cold calling, direct mail, what, whatever. Who, who are we going to list? If you didn't even know, we don't know who we're going to list the property. What are we doing? You need to collect their data. Step two, we confront them with value. I don't have to get, I don't, I don't have time to get into lead gen and ascension and retention and all those things, right? I can teach you that later. Today we're focused on conversion. <laughs> Collect targeted seller data, confront them with value. This third step is the one everybody skips. And it's why you, why you, why, why we're no good at conversion. The third one is comfort, comfort them with curiosity and dependability. The fourth one is confirm listing appointment. The fifth one is uh, convert the listing. So we collect data uh, we confront them with value. Uh, we comfort them, we confirm appointment, and we convert the listing. And what happens is, is we get the data, we confront them with value, we do good up to that point, but then when, as soon as we realize that they're wanting to sell, we skip the third step and go right to appointment time. We don't even know why we're setting an appointment. We don't even know why they're trying to do, they're like, oh, I want to sell, I might sell or whatever. Okay, cool, let me come take a look at it. What? No, you don't even know if going to look at it is the next step in the process. Because you, you have no idea what they want to do. You want to sell? Great. Why? Well, we, we're, we're probably going to sell in six months. Great. What's going on in six months that's got you thinking about selling in six months specifically? Oh, maybe two or three years. Great. See, what happens is, is we, hear, we hear this. We try to handle objections in order to try to get them to sell now. I don't. Obje Listen, objections and rejection, what you guys think is objection and rejection, is your prospect telling you what they want to do, and you just ain't listening. And the moment you go against what they want to do, they think you're not on their team, and they go, go find another agent who wants to help them do what they want to do, not what you want them to do. They don't care what you want to do, want them to do, and you shouldn't either. What you should want to do is help them do what they want to do. 
<laughs> so comforting them. Okay, comfort them with curiosity and dependability. Let me just dig on that for just a sec. We got to make them feel comfortable with us or they will not do business with us. How do we do that? Being comfortable with them. Easy. Curiosity. When they say they want to sell, you go five to 10 questions deep on why they want to sell. And here's where agents go wrong. They might, they might ask why, okay? Maybe they do, maybe they don't, maybe they do. And when the prospect's talking, in the agent's head, you, you're hearing all your voices in your head. What am I gonna say next? I hope they do the deal with me. I hope they like me. Like you're, li you're like listening to all these. And so you can't even pay attention to what they're saying long enough to draw out what the next question should be based on what they're saying. Is, it, is this going a little too deep for y'all? Is this help? Okay. I, I didn't know if I was going a little too deep because this is real talk. You're listening to your voice in your head and you, you, you're, you're listening, but you ain't really, what you should be doing is, is listening so hard that it's drawing up three more questions about their situation that you're fixing to ask them. And you keep going deeper, you go home. This is, what, this, this is what you guys do. You go home to your spouse. How's it going, honey? Oh, good, you know, Sarah was doing this at work. Oh man, I can't believe her. What are they gonna do? Oh, they're gonna do this, yeah, okay. You gonna do dinner? Cool. Netflix. You go two questions deep with your spouse. We gotta be going five to 10. And, and like, this is the level of curiosity you gotta have. Your prospects. You, you, you gotta be so curious. Well, what I want you guys to start doing. This is what I want, here's, here's an exercise. Anybody you talk to, people you know, your spouse, other agents, I want you to practice going, listen to them so hard that everything they say draws another question of curiosity out of you. And you keep asking them questions and keep asking them questions and you keep digging and digging and digging on that situation. And you practice with people you know and you realize this is the hidden, this is the hidden piece of the puzzle for most agents in lead conversion. Because once you, here's the secret, you, you understand why they wanna do more than they do. You've asked them questions about their situation they ain't even thought of. That's when, that's when it's over. They will not go even look at another agent. You got them. No agent's gonna go 10 to five to 10 questions deep on what they got going on and understand their situation more than they do. Nobody. That's the difference maker. How am I gonna stand out? By caring about your prospects. Enough to ask them why they're trying to do what they're trying to do. Oh, that's a novel idea. Care about people. <laughs> that's how you stand out. That's how you convert deals. Because when you do that and you focus everything on why they're trying to, how y'all doing over here, by the way? I ain't even seen y'all over here. I ain't talking to these people and them people and I ain't even talking to y'all over here. I feel bad. When you understand what they want to do more than they <laughs> even know, the, 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 when you focus everything on that and not the property, they can't wait to sign with you. And, and you don't even have to ask them. They're just like, you, okay, well, where's the listing agreement? Hey. You're like, oh, I got one around here somewhere. <laughs> what do you guys think the number one reason why someone chooses a real estate agent? Well, now it's a pick here. Speak, speak up. Trust, experience. I would say that the number one reason in all my years in coaching all these agents and selling all these properties, yeah, I, I picked up, I did eight years where I picked up 10 on average, 10 listings a month, single agent, um, one assistant, I did every listing appointment. I didn't have a team, I did it. I showed every property, I went to everything. Um, 
I know a little bit about closing listings. I've helped, I got, agents that, I, got, I got an agent that has 42 active listings right now. I got one that picked up 44 in 60 days. Um, th I got thousands of testimonials. I, I, know, I, I know a little bit about converting deals, mom. <laughs> and what I found that I believe, in my opinion, the number one reason why somebody chooses a real estate agent is because they like them. They just like them. Uh, an agent reached out to me, he messaged me and he said, I was talking to the seller and you know, we were having a great conversation. Everything went awesome. You know, I felt like I had this one in the bag and you know, they messaged me back and they said, oh, we're gonna go with this other agent because of their brokerage. They're more of a luxury brokerage and your brokerage doesn't really seem like it's uh, really a luxury brokerage, right? <laughs> And he's like, Ricky, what do I do? How do I reel them back in? How do I reel them back in? I said, bro, it's too late. I said, but let me, let me shed some light on this, okay? And I'm just giving you the, prob the most probable situation, which is probably the truth. I said, they're using the brokerage as an excuse. I said, bro, chances are, and it's okay. People don't like me. They, they don't like you. <laughs> they like the other agent more. That's it, plain and simple. You're not gonna win them all. And you can't sit here and take what they say at face value every single time. You gotta read between the lines, man. It's not exactly what it seems to be. It's like when they tell you, I'm not gonna take any less than one million on this house. Next thing you know, we're on the contract for 975, 950, 940, all the time. I'm not gonna pay more than 600 for this. Next thing you know, we're on a contract for seven something. And they were like, we're not gonna do this. Uh, okay, calm down. You know, I bet you will. <laughs> Seen this story play over and over and over again, right? So please understand that one of the, one of the best skills you can learn is when you go to these listing appointments is try to get better at being just likable a likable person. Now, what, what's a quality people love about people? Be yourself is a good one. Listening, yeah, 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 yeah. All, all these things are good. They're on the list, right? And I just want to add one. Being a hard worker. People love people that work hard. That's why, that's why you guys love me, right? Because y'all see me. Y'all see me. Y'all see me. Y'all know I'm working hard. Y'all know I'm grinding every day, all day long. And have been for decades. That's why people like people. Why, right? when people see a hard worker, they, wanna, they want to reward the hard worker. So if you, if you can find that balance between proving to them that you're a hard worker and a likable person, maybe you made them laugh a couple times. And I'm just saying, find your groove. But understand, that's, that's, the, that's the biggest variable, man is likability. They can blame it on whatever they want. But if they don't, if they like the other, and you know, you might think, man, they really didn't like me. Yeah, well, they like them a little bit more. They like them just a little bit more, and guess what? It's okay, because do y'all realize that a real estate business is a buffet? Right? It's a buffet of closings and listings and deals and opportunities, right? When you go to a buffet, can you eat all the food? Nope. When all the people in the restaurant, when they go up there and they start eating the food and it gets a little bit low, what do they do? They bring out more food. And it's just a never ending buffet. That's why they call it all you can eat, right? Real estate is an all you can eat buffet. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do all, you can't eat all the fried chicken. I'm sorry. You may, you may be sitting here thinking, oh, he got that, he got that fried chicken. So I can't, I, you know, oh, I got, he got that best looking piece of fried chicken. Go ahead and eat up all the rest of the chicken. It's right there. There's so much opportunity for each and every one of you. You can't do it all. I want you to realize that. The only limitation in your business is you with the limitations and how much you can handle. 
See, some people have like two pending deals and, and four in a contract. Their week, their month is shot. I don't know what they be doing for 40 hours a week on a couple of pending deals. I don't know what they do. I always had 10 to 20, um, I, always had 10, I always had 10 to 20 active uh, pending deals and 20 to 30 active listings at all times. I had 20 to 30 actives, 10 to 20 pendings. And I was standing on my head like, what are we going to do? I'm bored. People have different size buckets of what they can handle. All right. You got to figure out how much you can handle and keep it there. It don't have to be 10 to 20 and all everything I just said. But I guarantee it's more than you got right now. But it comes down to lead gen, conversion, uh, retention, ascension. If you don't have the pillars in place and figure out where you're getting stuck, you're going to continue to be stuck. All right, I got two more things. Is that okay? Am I, am I going too long? Am I good? Okay. I want to take a couple questions afterwards too. That's okay, right? Okay. Can I hurt y'all feeling for a second? Real estate agents are just horrible at sales. Do y'all agree or disagree? Raise your hand if you agree. Raise your hand if you don't agree. You think you create a sales. That's fine. And, 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 and some of them are, okay? But you know why most agents are really bad at sales? They're really bad at selling because they're horrible at buying. It's a mindset. You want customers that are just ready to just hire you right then and there. No fuss, no hassle, easy. That's what you want. You want them lined out the door and around the corner. That's what you want. But yet, that's not who you are. See, in this, in this world that God created, we, we attract our own kind. We reproduce, we, everything reproduces of its own kind, right? It's, it's like an apple tree. What's an apple tree got to do to grow apples? Be an apple tree. It can't grow apples if it's not an apple tree. You can't have great buyers if you're not a great buyer. We go to the shoe store. Shoe salesman comes up. Hey, how's it going? Uh, can I help you with anything? What do we do? Thank you. We're just looking. <laughs> the problem is, is that we have resistance towards sales. We feel like our clients are meeting us with the same resistance. And it, and it completely confuses our communication to our clients because the communication is coming out that we're timid because we feel like they have sales resistance and we don't really know they do. We assume they do because we do for every single sales situation we're in where, we're trying to, where, where somebody's trying to sell us. Until you're able to be a great buyer, you're not gonna be a great closer. I know this from experience. And I've helped a lot of other agents understand this and guess what, they crush sales now because they understand. Not everybody's meeting you with the same resistance that you meet every salesperson. There was an agent in uh, Fort Lauderdale, right down the road. She said, I said, have you sent the letters out? I have this buyer. I was like, you sent the letters out to the owners? No, 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 because they're going to think I'm lying. You have a buyer. You have the buyer. You're not lying. She's just assuming because, because I, said, I said, I see what it is. When you get a letter like that, you automatically think they're lying. And since you automatically think that every salesperson's a big fat liar and snake oil salesman, that that's what people are going to think about you when you try to sell them. So A, you don't take the actions you need to to put yourself in a position to do more sales. And B, when you do get in those situations, you're horrible at closing because your communication is off because you don't believe in the process. Sales is not to get people, okay? Sales is to help people. When you list a property, you're helping them solve a what? A problem in their life. You're helping them solve a problem in their life, okay? When somebody buys one of my coaching programs, Whatever I charge, I know for a fact they're going to 10x that investment in the next 12 months, right? 
And I've helped many agents make an extra 100, 200. I have agents making a million bucks a year that I've coached. If I charge someone $10,000, they go make $100,000 a year extra off of what I taught them for the rest of their life every year. Who won bigger? They won bigger. Did I win? Yeah, but who won bigger? My point is, is that you gotta put yourself in a situation where everybody that you help through your sales process, they're winning bigger than you are. And until you can visualize that, it's gonna be really hard for you to get behind your own selling process of conversion, because you don't believe in it. You don't believe you're helping them. You don't see the value. I'll tell you something else before I, that I just thought of on top of my head concerning the NAR situation. Nobody will ever pay someone less than the value that they provide. Now, here, here's the thing about that. You provide, you see, you think your value is this, but they value it at that. See, there, see people don't exchange money for the same amount of value. Like if I have a $15 and you have $15 and I trade you $15, we still got both $15. I'm not, we're not gonna do that deal. But if I had $20 and you have $15, you'll do that deal. See, people pay us the 3% commission because the value that we provide is worth way more than the 3%, 6%, 5%, whatever the number is. The reason they're willing to pay us because they see that it's worth more than that money the value that we provide. I could go through all the little things that we do. All the little things that we do. It's ridiculous what we do, right? That's underneath where nobody really sees it or understands it. But when I started in real estate in 2002, my commission was five or 6%. And guess what I get today? Five or 6%. It ain't changed in 22 years. Why? Even with Zillow and, and, and uh, discount brokers and, and, and all the things and AI and all the stuff, my commission ain't went down at all. Why? Because even with all that, you can't take away the value that we provide. And that's why real estate agents are going to be around forever. Yeah. Okay, last thing. Do you know why agents, like the really top producers, they make it look so easy? Like they just crush listings, they just get all these listings and they just like feel, it just looks like they're just like breezing through, like they're not even trying. Have you ever wondered like why, how they do that? I'll tell you how. It's because they've taken all the things that I've talked about today and that you've heard today from other speakers and that your broker teaches you and all the stuff that you know and learn, they've taken all that stuff and they've mastered it. They've mastered it. What is mastery? Mastery is doing something enough. Now remember the word doing, okay? And we'll come back to it. Doing something enough that you get to the point where you, you don't even have to think anymore. You just do it without even thinking. Right? When you, when you drive, tie your shoes, eat, talk on the phone, you, you don't think when you're doing those things. Same thing with listings and conversion, right? The people at the top have done so many listing appointments and they've been in so many situations. They've closed so many deals. They've lost, they've lost so many listings to other agents. It would make you guys sick right? You're seeing them now. They're just piling up all these listings and, but you have no idea how many listings and the appointments they went on that they didn't get. You have no clue. It wouldn't be mind boggling to understand those numbers. And they've done it so much to the point where when they go to listen point, they know exactly what, how to make this person like them, how to make them feel like they're a hard worker, how to make them sign the line, how to show their value. They know how to do that. It's like breathing. And so what I want you guys to do is I want you to take everything I talked about today. I want you to find your transformation right now. I want you to realize where your 20% is and needs to turn into your 80%. And I want you to take, I want this to be the turning point for you where from this day forward, you go on and do, you, you're going you're gonna to learn new things. 
so that you can do new things, so you can have new things. Thank you.